And on today's video, I'm going to cover off motion sensors in Home Assistant. And it could be any product really. It doesn't have to be Home Assistant. It could just be your Philips Hue bridge that you're using it because one of the ones I am covering is a Philips Hue. But I wanted to talk primarily around light automations and using motion sensors. Now there's a couple of use cases for this. I use it particularly for a hallway where if you're coming in and out, you certainly want the ability for the lights just to come on. I'm going to basically make it start running in the kitchen as well. And you could use it in a bathroom, albeit you'd have to make sure you keep moving. Could be fun, have a disco on the loo. Anyway, ones I'm looking at today, like I said, Philips Hue and the Aguara. Now the Aguara is the more budget friendly, but I'll be honest, you really can't tell the difference. It's an absolutely outstanding piece of kit. Now both of them are battery operated, which helps, so you don't need to wire them in anywhere. This one, obviously, as you can probably tell, has got a stalk. So you do have a few more options with its mounting capabilities. So great. The third one I'm going to look at is an external one. And I use that for my external lights. And the only one I've really found to work really well in here, because it needs to be weatherproof, so it needs the IP rating, is the Philips Hue one. Now, the problem I've got with that is I do have two of them. They're both installed. So what I'll probably do is get out there with my camera in a short while on this absolutely blustery day and just do a little bit of video and a talk around those. So without further ado, let's get cracking. So this is a Philips Hue one, and when installed, I couldn't do an unboxing because I've already got these. We've got these little magnetic things. You have to screw them to the wall, so there is mounting required. Um, and all they do is just, with that, sit in there. You can see from the angle, you set off the wall by, you know, probably just over a centimetre, maybe a little bit more, maybe, you know, half inch roughly. But yeah, they're really good. I mean, you know, they kind of stick fairly well. If you don't align it up properly, it will fall off. But it does a good job. Now these, I'll be honest, I've never had one fail to register motion. They do seem really reliable. I've got two of these ones currently, one in my conservatory and one in my hallway. They also do have the ability to collect luminancy as well so you can get bits from there they do have temperature these ones as well which is quite interesting um so you know might, might be worth it if you need that functionality as well but yeah they're really good so the other one i wanted to look at which was the aquara and i'll show you how it comes it's almost like a live unboxing video this isn't it without the kind of dignified way of opening it because there's no need to no point doing an unboxing video so it takes seconds and just lift straight out hopefully there we go. and you can see how small the device is um, you compare it to my thumb it's about that big that round uh, what can i bring in let's bring in a usb stick to compare it to so you can kind of see there the size for comparison you can see there's a pull bit there to make it active you also get so the battery pre-installed which is really simple to access the battery you just have to twizzle it which i'll do in a moment and the store again i'm doing it very undignified it's just removed as so and what it's got sticky pad there which we just need to remove the top on sticky pad there and it can bend so you've got a few options for how you mount it so if i pull that out that will start to work when it comes to pairing the device there is a little button just there so pairing it to mqtt zigb is really simple just hold that down and it will find the device and i'll show you that right now so if we're going to look to pair this device, and I've got it in my hand so you can see, you need to remove the pull cord, first of all. So it says, remove before use. Good idea. Pull that out, and you might be able to see on the video, but it will start to flash, or it will when I certainly hold the button. So I'll kind of keep it in view. What we'll do is we'll go through to Zigbee to NQQT, click on that and then from here 
will allow the permit join all. And if you haven't done this before, go and watch my wonderful video on how I set this up. So I click permit join all, and all I'll do is hold that button in, and you should hopefully see it flash here in a minute. There you go, it's flashing now, or it started to flash. There we go, and you can see it's found a new device. So this one here, I'll go in, and I'm going to give it a new name, and I'm going to call this Kitchen Light Sensor. Ah, it's not a light sensor, motion sensor. So near. Yeah. That's pretty much what it's near. And we'll click rename device. And that's now working. And you can see it's found the device. Now I've got a couple of these. So if I do go back to CBQMTT, you will see I've got another one kitchen sensor near conservatory. So I have kind of kept the same name. You can then see who apparently manufactures them. So it gives you an idea. They are really, really good quality though. So I won't spend too long going over these, but these are basically my set of automations. And if we just focus on some of the lighting ones, for example, um, we've got a couple in here that kind of work quite simply. So the hallway lights, this uses the, the Philips Hue motion sensor. But basically all it's doing is detecting motion, turning on hallway one and two's lights because they're separate waiting for 120 seconds and turning off. Now, that's a simple one because my hallway is quite dark. I don't want it to necessarily always work on the sunset, etc. Now, where it gets interesting is where you need to consider sunset and you don't necessarily want, or luminancy, and you don't want the, you know, the lights to come on when you're, you know, it's light because there's no need. So if we look at my conservatory one, for example, it's slightly different, and this is done via a blueprint, which is a community one, and I'll show you where you can get these. But basically what this is doing is looking for a sun condition. And I find this works sometimes a little bit better than luminancy, just because you can kind of set the offsets. And I know obviously when it's dark, that's a challenge, but you've always got the ability to turn the light on and off anyway with your phone if needs be. So. It's kind of there. It's up to you. You can play around with luminancy if you like. But basically what this is doing, again, is keep this on for four minutes rather than what. Uh, it's looking for the offset to turn off the light. So basically, we're giving itself 60 minutes either side of sunset. And then similar, the other side, just 45 minutes. So it kind of covers if it's a bit of a darker day, generally. Now the challenge will be is if I want to set up a new automation for the sensors I've put in the kitchen, they're not lights, so they're switches. So what I won't be able to do is build out a simple one, two, three, off you go, or, or use a blueprint. Now the blueprints I've got are motion activated with some condition, and you can find all of these here. So basically, if I just backtrack out, there is a community side for these blueprints and if I wanted to install one of these so if I just went latest and maybe wanted that schedule auto update I can click on this and just put import blueprint and it'll go through for me and I'll just have to confirm that so really straightforward so I suppose the question is how would I go about building one for the kitchen though and they're not lights so if we go back to automation what I can do is just come down the bottom here um, behind my head so I do apologize but there is a blue button here that says new and what I'm going to do is create an automation and it's just going to be a new automation so the trigger will just basically be a device and it may well be um, for example kitchen motion sensor near fridge we we'll use that one and all it's doing is saying start and detection motion you can kind of put the amount of duration that it detects motion for because if somebody walks in and out quickly do you want it to trigger and to you? We can add a condition, so we can add the sun, so I might do that. So we'll say before sunrise we want it, and you can set the offset here. So I might, I won't change it at the moment. And then after sunset as well. And then what I'm going to do is basically just add the action of turning on certain lights. So all I'm going to do is go device and kitchen 
I'm going to turn this on later and see if anybody in the house notices. Kitchen lights, and there will be a turn on. Uh, which one do we want? Turn or turn on kitchen near fridge lights. So that's what I was going to do. Now, the problem is, I can't put a delay in here because it's not a simple way. There is ways I can do it. I could add like a helper in at, at a certain amount of time for it to check if this light's on, if there's any motion, then turn off. That's a completely different schedule. It's a little bit harder to do, but just set up a helper, have some kind of delay in there so it starts a counter from the moment this is turned on and then get it to reference back to the helper to solve it. Um, I'll do that on another video because I'm going to get a bit more into helpers, but I'm hoping over time, the way Home Assistant keeps developing, I'm pretty sure they'll solve this. So we'll just click save. So what should happen now, we'll give it a name and we'll just call this, uh, let's call this kitchen lights auto on near fridge. So we'll see what happens later. So they're just going to turn on and not turn off. So a bit of a challenge. Uh, but yeah, actually, unless there's a check way I can delay it, let's have a look. No, because it's just a switch, it's either on or off. I could then add a add an action, I suppose, to say, uh, wait for time to pass, and then I could then say, you know, or, or then set up a different automation to say, if it's on, then run the following. But yeah, that would, that would turn the lights on. So I'm not necessarily going to enable that at the moment because it wouldn't do me any favour. So... But yeah, let's just disable that for now. But yeah, that's how to set up automations. Um, like I said, I will cover off a bit more later on helpers. Uh, final part is just to have a quick look at my outdoor sensors. I'm just going to go and brave the elements and then we'll do a bit of a summary. So the ones outside, this is my Philips Hue PIR light switch. Well, motion sensor, basically. So you'll notice it's got a nice little V-shaped bracket as well which is really useful. And what that does is he powers these two Philips or activates these two Philips Hue lights. The good part about these is they also act as temperature sensors. The other one I've got is around the side. It's not on the V bracket and that powers that one. So we've covered off the motion sensors by Aquara and by Philips Hue. And like I said, realistically, either of them will work for your purpose. I've linked all of those available options in the description. I will say both of them are absolutely outstanding products. Both of them will tell you that they need a hub. I would strongly suggest if you're gonna use the Philips Hue, you do use a Philips Hue hub. There are limitations though. Obviously with Philips Hue, you can only have up to 50 devices installed per bridge. If you've gone and followed any of my other videos where you use the Zigbee with the Aguaras or Aquara, you can have as many as you like. You could open up MQTT with Zigbee and have many, many devices installed on this. I think it's default, it's set to 50, but with the flashing that I've probably shown you in one of my videos by now, you can certainly unlock a lot more. So, which one would I go with? It's difficult, really. It depends on your use case. Obviously, if you're looking outside, you'd certainly look at that Philips Hue one. If you're linking it to Philips Hue equipment and you're not using Home Assistant and you don't want the faff of doing that or the, you know, I wouldn't say it's faff, but a little bit more development, then you'd probably stick with the Philips Hue range. If you're more than capable and confident with Home Assistant, then I'd certainly recommend these. And the reason for it would be is one, the price point, and two, the flexibility of how you mount these. Also, the viewing angle of these is pretty ridiculous, to be honest. Um, seems really sensitive. It does have the luminancy sensor as well. And the way this sensor works is it does base it on occupancy as well, which makes the whole use around also using it for an alarm system a lot better. So, yeah, as you can tell as well, so it's a two-year battery life, 170 degrees field of view, and it does say local remote alarm as well, so I think you can actually make this make a noise. I've not tried it, but 
we'll see see what happens anyway that's it for today if you have liked this video please hit the like and subscribe and i'll see you next time